Thanks for joining us for today's episode of The Capitalist Investor. You got Mark, Johnny Lawrence, Cobra Kai Tepper. <laughs> you got Diamond Hands D. What's up, Mark? And Cool Hand, is it Cool Hand or Cool Hands? You want two hands or one hand? One hand. One hand, Cool Hand Luke. Yeah. Cool Hand Luke. I don't, need, I don't need my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> Just the right one to throw that knuckleball? That's exactly right. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we got a, uh, a good podcast lined up for you today. Lots of uh, hot topic current events that we need to kind of hash out uh, and unpack a little bit. So we are going to be focusing on what's front and center in the news today. So first and foremost is Omicron, the new, ver the new variant of COVID that all of a sudden has countries panicking and stating uh, travel bans and things like that. So I want to kind of hash that out. We'll start off with that. I want to talk about inflation because it seems like the Fed is finally uh, admitting that uh, they're, they're kind of doing an about face, right? They told us for the last year or two, I, I forget when inflation really started to pick up, but they've been telling us it was transitory, which is short term. It ain't transitory, guys. It's here to stay. They must have li Powell listened to our podcast last week. Probably he, did. he definitely did. I he, called him out, yeah. and he and he finally admitted it. Yeah, he's one of our he, He's one of our twelve <laughs> listeners. <laughs> it's just funny how he said it. it's like we probably shouldn't say the word transitory <laughs> anymore. Like, yeah. this is the way he said it. It's just total like, about face. Yep. Itself. Yep. We'll we'll hash that out, and then the third thing I want to cover is uh, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday and supply chain issues. All right, so let's, let's, let's start off with Omicron. Who wants to go first and tee this one up? You know, Omicron kind of sounds like, you know, the new, uh, the new uh, bad guy in like a Marvel comic movie oh, or something doubt. like that. Without a doubt. <laughs> so. Did, did you guys happen to notice before we get into Omicron that the WHO decided not, to, they skipped the next two Greek letters yeah. They skipped new and you, mm -hmm. and they skipped she. I wonder why, President Mark. Xi. Exactly. Well, that's why. Dude, they, they have zero China. credibility. The They've, WHO has no credibility. They are in China's back pocket. They've got no backbone. Yeah. They, no. We can't. No. And then that's the issue is we can't stand up to China, and, and, and this all originated from we China. Were standing <laughs> up, so. We were standing up to China. Trump was holding their feet to the fire. Yeah. Now we're rolling over. Yep. That's exactly right. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. And people are worried is about, you know, where this is going to go. Is it going to lead to more travel restrictions here in the U.S.? I mean, we're already seeing Australia, Canada just came out and said that, you know, if you're over 12 years old and unvaccinated, like you can't like essentially go anywhere like on the tram system and things like that. Like, yeah. it's, it's it's scary that we're already considering shutting down and we don't even have any data yet. Dude, it, the, well, the data we do have, the initial reports out of South Africa say that the symptoms are incredibly mild. Yeah. Incredibly mild. And that's in an unvaccinated area. I mean, that's in a very unvaccinated area. Correct. So. Correct. That the symptoms are very mild. And and look, to anyone listening, isn't, isn't this what we always wanted? We knew COVID was going to be here forever, right? We knew it was going to continue to mutate. Didn't we want it to get to the point where it was more transmissible, yes. but it also came with less serious or very mild symptoms? We want Isn't that like that's what happened to the common cold over time? And that's what happened to the flu over time. Isn't that what we wanted? Yes. Why are we Why are we panicking? Because I, I think it's just psycho the psychology of it, right? Right. We we all we hear in the media over the past year and a half is how bad COVID is. And, and when you take a look at the stats, I actually researched some stuff over the past couple of days um, about the numbers. I think it was a, a New York Times poll um, that they put out there and they took a look at Democrats and Republicans and how it, it, they asked the question, if you got COVID, what is the likelihood of you going to the hospital? Democrats said 50%, you know, you have a 50% chance of going to the hospital. Wow. Republicans said 10% chance. Which one's yeah. more accurate? The 10%, <laughs> yeah. but that's still even, even very that's high. Because yeah. yeah. the yeah. actual percentage of people like that actually would go to the hospital, even for us just to see what's up, is 5%. Yeah. And, and that's kind of makes you understand how much of the media has had an impact of pushing the agenda of COVID. The, the media, the stats say something completely different, and that's what's happening right now. The media has definitely sensationalized everything that's happening, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then you've got the, the Biden administration, which, you know— I, how do, how do I say this nicely? You he's a bumbling idiot. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's I, the best way. <laughs> he's not even good at reading off the teleprompter. Because of the actions we've taken, things have begun to change. 
end of quote, in, end of quote, in the past three weeks. Right. Um, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what day of the week it is. Nor do I, but. That's <laughs> because <laughs> he worked too damn hard, Mark. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, the guy, he, it's a struggle fest, you know. So why the need? I, why the knee-jerk reaction? To appease the media? It's, it's almost like the knee-jerk reaction of the travel ban, which, dude, it's already in our country. Maybe, maybe there haven't been any diagnoses as of the time of us recording this show, yeah. but it's already here. Well, it's think, already in the U.S. I, I think the knee-jerk reaction in the stock market was just a simple fact that there was no liquidity in the market on Friday. Yeah. I think that was the combination of that, and then people are now freaking out because the market's down 2% again. So I, th I think that had the big factor to it. The market might have been down half a percent, maybe, I think, on a normal market day, which wouldn't have freaked out a lot of people, and uh, hence the selling we had yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, I'm saying yesterday, which is last week from the show. <laughs> that, that's what I think is one of the, the key points as far as the market reaction goes, because I don't, I don't think the market is reacting to the dangers that the virus presents or the dangers that the any variant pr presents i think they're all the, the investors that is they're they're all scared about what restrictions are going yes. to randomly be put in place they're scared about the let me see if i can pronounce this the politicization politicization yes. of the virus <laughs> yeah right well politically what is going to be the policy response that is what the markets are afraid of and I think they were really only afraid of that on Friday yeah. mm -hmm. because the sell off um, on Tuesday, I think a hundred percent had to do with Jay Powell's comments on oh, yes. inflation, yes. which mm -hmm. we'll talk about that next. So let's not get into yeah, that. Yeah. The, the biggest, the biggest thing I see and the biggest risk I see, and I talked about this on Charles Payne is, uh, is um, stagflation. Um, yeah. That's the biggest risk that, you know, like you said, the political side of it, if we shut down the economy again, and we print more money, we do more stimulus, things like that, <laughs> it's going to make inflation worse and it's going to make the economy not grow as fast, right? Yeah. So that's the biggest yep. long-term risk. I think that's what investors kind of are saying or are looking at um, from the long-term time horizon. But Biden did say he's not going to shut down the economy, but we all know that that's who knows what could happen. Anything yep. could happen at this point in time because who knows what's going through their heads because it's all political, yeah. right? If, if, Democrat, if the Democratic base says, let's shut down the economy and that will get us votes because we want to appease some people, then they're going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, but there's Democrats out there that are looking back. Hindsight's twenty twenty, always, yeah. right? But they're looking back and saying, maybe that was dumb. Right. I mean, look at Biden's approval rating. It's, it's not way good. Down, way down. Yeah. He's wildly popular, if you listen to the press uh, briefings. Oh, yeah? You mean Is CNN that coming from Jen Psaki or yeah, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, when, or, when everyone where they handpick who gets to ask a question. <laughs> yeah. I love how he's always reading off a list. Like, oh, oh I'm going to go with Alex from Thompson Reuters. Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm pretty sure that Biden, like, reads off a teleprompter from the questions. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all saw the, the, the image of one of the first pressers he did where he had, like, a, like a, a picture book. Mm -hmm. Like you get it when you graduate high school, <laughs> yeah, you know, I remember this. with like the pictures of the of the reporters <laughs> and who they were. And there were X's over all of the r the right of center. <laughs> right? Do you remember that? Yeah, my son got one. He's two. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So we, we can go over the names of his friends in his class. Oh, geez, oh man. <laughs> um, all right, what, el what else do we want to touch on on Omicron? I, look, my, my opinion on it is I think the market's already becoming desensitized to the latest COVID news headline of the day. Yeah. Yep. And if you, if you think about it, for us to recapture the, the highs that we experienced in October of 2007, following the great financial crisis, it took six years for us to regain that prior peak, right? For a reattain it, whatever the, the appropriate word is. This time around, from the February 2020 peak, it took us six months, dude. It's insane. That was already was. a fast recovery. And then when you look at every subsequent variant, the alpha variant out of the UK, the delta variant, I don't even remember where that one sprung up, India, I think, mm -hmm. India. Um, and now Omicron, right? Like, the pullbacks have become more shallow and shorter with each subsequent virus. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure I, I'm the culprit here because every time I go to Vegas, it's like two weeks before <laughs> the new virus comes out. 
like I'm going to Vegas here in two weeks. And now the Omicron's you coming out. You a super spreader, dude? I, it might be because the, <laughs> the Delta variant came out like last year, this time or November, December. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was just I think I'm the culprit here. Yeah, I think I need to stop going. Yeah, to Vegas. well, you know what? I would I'd, be really. I'd rather off. I'd rather have you do that than be one of these idiots wearing their mask while they're sitting in their car by themselves. <laughs> yeah. well, so. I'm just, I'm just gonna be really ticked off if they put the restrictions on there here in two weeks and they're here in America, right? Put mask mask requirements back on and all that BS. That's yeah. not gonna be fun. I mean, that, that's the thing. I'm not doing that. And we still saw, you know, we're gonna talk here, you know, at the end of the show about the Black Friday and Cyber Monday stuff. And this happened all on Black Friday, like the Omicron stuff. And we yeah. still saw a pretty big traffic turnout on Black Friday, physical stores and shopping, which yeah. is interesting to see because it was all over the media, Omicron, and people still went out and shopped. Yeah. So people aren't as scared as they used to be because people are either vaccinated or they know that they're the data. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Any anything else we want to hit on on Omicron, or have we made our case? I think we've made our case. All right, let's <laughs> move on to Jay Powell's comments from earlier this week or yesterday, which will be a week old by the time mm. this is actually posted. Um, but he basically said, uh, we are considering accelerating our bond tapering. Uh, we are likely to raise interest rates sooner. And... Um, Inflation isn't transitory, right? <laughs> kind of in a nutshell, those so, are the so three what, things. So what we've been said. saying like the past six months. Yeah, you we've been saying mean? this all along, right? I mean, we talked. I think we talked about on a past show about that steak that I ordered a couple weeks ago, yep. where it was listed on the menu at market price. <laughs> yeah. Like I've never, ever, ever seen that happen for a cut of meat unless it was like wagyu. Right. Like well, wa I've seen wagyu listed at market price because it's so freaking rare. Yeah, you know? to fly and it's, it's, it in. It's, yeah, yeah right? I was looking back at some of the podcasts and some of the national TV videos, and uh, we've been talking about this since June or July. That's not so we're smarter than everyone else. I, I don't want to say that necessarily, but I mean, I do. I, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, we, we we saw it when you put all the data together again, data together, and you take the economic point of views that we we so you know so much believe in because we live this and breathe this every single day. Uh, the numbers pointed to this for a long, very long time. And that, that's what interests me is that right after Jay Powell gets reelected, you know, a week after, now he comes out and he's a little bit more hawkish saying we're going to taper. <laughs> Inflation's not transitory. It's here to stay. Yes. That, so, that's so was he sandbagging? Yes. I, I agree. He was sandbagging. D? Uh, I think he was lying. <laughs> yeah. 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 He wanted reelected. And that, that's the problem with politics because the Federal Reserve should not be political. And thankfully, you know, we get Powell rather than the Brainerd. Brainerd would have brought even more politics to the Federal Reserve chair. But, you know, when it comes to the monetary pol the policy from the Federal Reserve, it should never be political. And that's what really upsets I, me. With, with if it was political. With Brainerd, I apologize if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure I saw a video of her a couple years ago getting questioned by maybe Congress, and she was she was tossed the question, "Are, are you a socialist?" And she sidestepped it; she wouldn't answer it. Oh mm -hmm. Gosh, like, that's a that's scary. <laughs> Do you want that person running the Fed? <laughs> the printer will go burr even more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> than, than it used to, it did with Powell. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> what What is that? It's uh some some law. I forgot the name. But the 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 most simple explanation is probably the the most true. This guy was just lying to our faces for six months so he could get another term. Yeah, because if you but, like, if, it's it's if you don't think that, I I, I have nothing. But, but for at the you. same point in time, like, <laughs> was there a better alternative than Powell? No. I'm happy. Oh, Powell. Yeah, no, I'm I happy. Powell's still there. I agree that we need to accelerate the tapering. Yeah. I agree that we need to raise interest rates sooner. Mm -hmm. I don't like paying through the nose for really? my steak. And I the like steak on the menu was listed like lobster at market price. Mm -hmm. steak, and I like my steak. Me too. I'm, I'm really upset about it, yeah. if we're being honest. I don't, honest. Like, it. I, I don't like going to Costco and, and just well, not buying a steak just because well, it's offensive how much they're income. charging. Yeah. But I go to Costco now, and I, and I look at the meat, and I'm like, I just I can't justify spending that. Yes. <laughs> and on the other side of things, if – you aren't charging more money, you're probably getting low, lower quality meat or whatever mm -hmm. it be. Because yesterday I just went to my wing night, you know, Tuesday wing night, got my 20 wings. Your wings and uh, your beers? Yeah, I actually didn't have, any beer. didn't have any beer. You didn't have any beer. How are you doing on that diet? I'm not going very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I Thanksgiving killed me. I'm pretty sure I put on like well, I think, uh, Well, yeah. Everyone gets a free pass the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, and then, I, then you're back to square one. I, that's mm -hmm. okay. I've got three weeks. I'm going to try to be good until, until I go to Vegas. But anyway, I went there, got my wings, and I noticed I haven't been there for probably about a month. Yeah. And I noticed the wings did not taste as good. And They're I They're getting smaller, too. They were smaller. I don't know about at your place, yep. but they, they that's were, offensive. When mm -hmm. you get all bone, no wing. Yeah. 
Yeah, but they were smaller and they didn't taste as good. So that's the other side of infl- other side of inflation that nobody talks about: shrinkflation. It's it's like those old. Uh, well, Luke, you're you're a young pup, but D and I, <laughs> when we were kids in elementary school, remember the candy sales? Like you'd sell a candy oh, yeah. bar, mm-hmm. right? You'd sell a candy bar, and they were like full size candy bars, and people would pay a dollar, and it was like a school fundraiser. Right. Well. The candy bars today might still be a dollar, but you're getting the bite-sized so, candy bars, so, right? Yeah. Like the, why weren't people fat back then, then? <laughs> like, seriously, if something... Dude, are you strong? serious? Everyone has diabetes today. <laughs> That's what I said. Why weren't people fat back then? They were fat. They were getting fat. They were getting That's fat, when they were ruining their, their pancreas and their production of insulin yeah. was back in the, the 80s and 90s when all the buzz was high carb, right. low fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That like you, you fat. if you wanted to drink f- seven cans of Coca Cola a day, that was fine. <laughs> no one, no one looked at you. That's true, right? That's like true. that was yeah. acceptable. Now, if you're doing that, you look at people like, what, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> yep. Um, so y- the game has changed, right? The I game- mean, that, that's why, you know, Abbott Labs with their continuous glucose monitor has done so well. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Because you know, unfortunately, the this quote unquote science as this administration likes to refer to all the time, the science said for 20 straight years, high carbs, high sugar is okay. Mm -hmm. Low fat is the way to go, right? Right. Well, the key is you can't have both, right? You can't have high fat and high carbs. That's what gives you, that's diabetes like this. this, That's a heart attack. That's that's what gives you a heart attack, (laughs) right? Because it's the, um, it's, the fat attaches, so I, I'm kind of a science nerd when it comes to this <laughs> I, stuff. I, I, I research right. a lot too. So yeah. the the when when you're eating high carb and high fat, the fat attaches to the carb and then it gets stuck on your arteries. If you're eating high fat without the carbs, it flows right through your system and it doesn't attach itself to the arteries. Right. So I've I've done all the pale I've read all the paleo books, all the I, keto I, books. Yeah. I've read them all, man. So I I'm. And I've got, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay health-wise. Yeah, you're, you're not inflating like me. <laughs> I'm, I, no, no, I didn't gain. I'm, I'm going to be deflating here in the next I didn't weeks. gain the COVID-20. I've, um, I've done okay. But no, in, in inflation is definitely a concern. I'm, I'm just very thankful that they finally are admitting that. I think that's good for this long-term economy. The, the market didn't rea- obviously react negatively because it's, it's sold off. That's like, a knee-jerk you know, reaction, percent. though. Yeah, it is. As we're recording, this, the market's up today. But I would say that, you know, I'd trade short-term pain for long-term gain. And I think that's what we're doing right now by hiking interest rates, combating inflation. This is stuff you have to do, man, because all the stocks you own, if we don't stamp out inflation, margins will be eroded. You can't pass it all on to the consumer. Yep. You can't. So when your margins are eroded, that means your earnings go down. Yep. That also means the multiple's probably going to go down on a lower earnings base. Mm -hmm. The market crashes. It's not good for the market. No, it's not good for the market. It's not good for uh, the middle class. And, then because and, the, and lower income people, up. right? Well, especially the lower income. But, you know, the middle class, the majority of people, right? So um, it's not good for the majority of the population when prices are up 6 7%. And the and thing is, again, this is what I talked about a couple of weeks ago when we first were talking about transitory. Yeah, we probably are close to maybe peak inflation. As long as the supply chain doesn't get messed up again, as long as we don't shut down the economy, probably close to peak inflation, but that's still five th- or that's six. That's fine. So we're not going to continue at 6.2%, right. right. but is it, it's not going to go back down to 1.9. Not anytime soon. No, no. it'll be 20, 30, 40 years, maybe down the road before we even see anything close yeah, to that. Right. So, so inflation, we are going to have to get comfortable with a higher rate of inflation. Yep. And we got we got to position our portfolios correctly for that, right? Yeah. We got to make sure we hedge against that. Yep. And that's the uh, it's one of the biggest mistakes I see right now is people are scared of the market because yep. it's too high. And and if there we are if we do see five percent six percent inflation, we we got to we got to get a little bit more aggressive to hedge against that. And that's the sad sad part of it. But you got to be smart with being aggressive with it, right? And that's no what doubt. we talked about alternatives before in our past p- podcast. So. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of people were using crypto as an inflation hedge, which man, as soon as the market went risk <laughs> off. I think forgot it, Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto forgot it was an inflation hedge right. and became a risk on asset that went completely risk off. Yep. You know, who decided Bitcoin is an inflation? hedge? I have no freaking <laughs> clue because it's who, who made that call. I don't know because <laughs> yeah. you hear I it all the time now. Well, it's a, it will be eventually if it becomes what it's supposed to become. If it, if it actually becomes a million dollars a coin and gets, you know, market cap becomes worth 10, 15 trillion trillion dollars. It's going to be so big to that point where the volatility is going to be so small, it will become an inflation hedge. But it's nowhere close to that yet. Yeah. Yep. 
All right, let's move on from inflation because um, all that talk made me hungry. And <laughs> let, let's let's move on to Black Friday, Cyber Monday. You know the 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 blockbuster retail shopping weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and let's talk about supply chain. Who wants to tee this one up? I'll take this one um, since since this one was mine. I was just seeing you know a, a lot of blurbs out there about you know traffic and sales and all that stuff. So. Yeah, the the first kind of initial wave of reports that I saw was traffic, uh, like brick and mortar people in the stores traffic was up 48 uh, percent year over year, which I thought was fantastic. <clears throat> but when you think about it for a second, there's basically no one out shopping last year um, except for me. I went out because <laughs> I waited too long to order my stuff online. Yep. Um, but it looks like when all the numbers are are are, are settled uh, between you know that period of Black Friday to Cyber Monday, it looks like for the first time ever sales are going to be down a little bit. It looks like around one point four percent. Now records keep getting broken every year. It's basically gone up every year. So this is the first time we we saw a slight decrease. Um, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about it. I, I don't think it's any kind of cause for alarm because I think, I think things are changing. You know, as much as you know, I, I don't like <laughs> how they they have changed. Uh, I I kind of liked the you know getting exciting excited for Christmas. You know, well, going out and shopping. I think everybody bought their gifts in October and in, in early. That's yeah, exactly what you happened. Saw, you saw a tremendous pull forward because of the supply chain concerns. Yes. Yep. Dude, I am the Christmas Eve shopper. That's me. That's yep. who I've always been. I have a shop. I, I procrastinate. I wait and I wait and I wait until I can no longer buy it on Amazon. <laughs> I literally have to get in my car and go to the yep. store, right? I have bought all of my big gifts already this year, and I bought them before Black Friday, before Cyber Monday. So I think there was just inflation, supply chain, Omicron. Like, that's, that's what is always in the news right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And suddenly everybody is a supply chain know-it-all. <laughs> Even people who have no idea what supply chain means. Right. Like they, everyone thinks they know everything about supply chains yeah. and logistics and all that stuff. And they don't, but what the news is telling them is your goods might not get here. You better buy them now. Right. And, right? and that's why I think these numbers are actually really good. If, if, I, if you look behind the scenes, if you think about it from that perspective, that we've, most people have already bought their gifts, and Bl Cyber Monday deals are only down 1%, and I think Black Friday sales are projected to be up just a tad, maybe 1% mm -hmm. or 2% yeah. since last year. It, it's, overall, it's actually projected that we're, holiday sales are up 10 to 15%. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the total holiday sales from like the, what, the fourth quarter, right? So that when you look at that side of things, it's actually very, very bullish that we're up that high <laughs> since last year, even when the first stimulus checks were coming out. You know, people were the market was flooded with money. People are you know finally don't you know spending all their money that they you know accumulated. So we're now at the last tad bit of that, but they're still spending money. They're still up 10, 15 percent from year yeah. over year. I mean, it seems like the the sa household savings. Like that number is starting to come down, mm -hmm. but credit card debt is starting to go back up. Yeah, right. you for know? sure. And we talked about that a little bit uh, a couple of weeks ago too. But I've I've always kind of looked at the holiday season, uh, the shopping season, as kind of a you know a barometer of how the just the overall uh, sentiment is out there. Uh, so you know it, I think it's still a good thing that the economy is chugging along. But what I fear, and this is what we talked about a couple of weeks ago too, is that yeah, people have gotten used to a lifestyle. Maybe they have oh, yeah. had some. It's like some, drugs, dude. Uh, it is. Well, that's like you can't drug. take it away. Mm -hmm. So now you know the stimmy checks. <laughs> stimmy checks are 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 running out, and and everyone still has an appetite for just buying a bunch of stuff online because that's that's what we do in America. Well, and, and I was actually out this Black Friday shopping. And I saw zero deals. Like there was not, there's, there's no great deals, deals anymore. So no. I think that was the other issue is like people mm -hmm. went out, like they wanted to go buy things. This Black Friday yeah. and Cyber Monday, like we got out there, like I could have bought this four weeks ago for the same price. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> when, you know, back when like you had a bunch of TVs to sell, you could, you could discount a TV yep. to get someone to come into the store. Yeah. Now, when you have, when you're a big Best Buy, and you've got two TVs in your entire store, <laughs> why would you discount them right. to get people to come in? There's just, 
it's dumb. There's no reason for it. Mm-hmm. You know, no, that's exactly right. Supply and demand. And now, that's, that's all right. All, it is. all right. So here's my question to you guys then. So I think we're all in agreement that Black Friday and Cyber Monday, um, the, the in, maybe this entire weekend, a lot of it had to do, uh, a lot of the decline had to do with supply chain issues, people pulling forward their purchases, things like that. Do you think, so here, here's, here's my question. Do you think Black Friday ever becomes what it used to be ever again? No, I think this was probably the last chance. Yeah. Because I think now we're going to position more for Cyber Monday and online sales. I think, I think people wanted to get out because of COVID last year. People you know, didn't get out right. and shop for Black Friday. That's why you saw the 48% increase from year over year. So I think this was the final chance for it to really be the best it's ever been. And sadly, it, it wasn't the best since the, since the early days. But you know, and that, that's just the simple fact that it's easier to go online and buy goods and shop. And, you know, I don't want to be around people, don't have to wait in line, things like that. Yeah. Um, I remember when people used to, like, camp out. Yeah, like, go in 5, 5 a.m. to Target and stuff. That's Yeah, sometimes early, sometimes they'd start camping out at midnight, mm-hmm. man. Like, yeah, well, the dumb. problem with that is you got to look at the value of your time, right? So if you're shopping, sitting out there for, like, 10 hours. And you're going to feel miserable the next day. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because exactly. you're pulling all-nighter. I mean, I've never, I've never actually gone out and, and shopped on, on Black Friday to like specifically find a deal. But I mean, uh, especially my wife's side of the family, that they were like into it. Um, something to talk about at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a tradition for a lot of people. But yeah, you know, it's brick and mortar. It's just, it's just not it anymore. So, so my favorite <laughs> stat, as we're on this topic, my favorite stat that I pulled is that the ongoing supply chain crisis also hampered sales, as we talked about. Adobe said that the prevalence of out-of-stock messages was up 169% compared to January 2020. So uh, over almost close to triple yeah. what it was over 2020, and uh, 258% up 258% compared to the 2019 holiday shopping season. So up almost four times, essentially, um, the holiday the pre-COVID shopping. yeah pre-COVID yeah so I, 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 was, I mean obviously <clears throat> it imp- impacted that I mean I my my uh, girlfriend wanted a, uh, a Nintendo Switch or something just for a little gaming thing and that yeah. was all out everywhere so um, yeah I I, uh, I had to buy another PS5 and last year I got gouged because I had to go on to eBay to buy it second hand mm-hmm. um, and I bought another one this year and I had to go back to eBay again yeah and I got gouged maybe not as bad as I got gouged last year, but it was it was a good gouging. It's still up there. It really is. It's, yeah, they're they're hard to find. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, good show today. We want to thank all of our listeners for joining us week after week. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email at info at swpconnect.com. If you've got any topics you want us to cover on a future show, let us know about those as well. Again, info at swpconnect.com. Thanks, and we'll talk to you next week. The opinions expressed in the podcast are for general informational purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any investment, legal, financial, or tax strategy. It is only intended to provide education about the financial industry. Please consult a qualified professional about your individual needs.